One of the best things about YNAB is its ability to help you break the paycheck to paycheck cycle and finally get ahead. And to do this, it uses a concept called age of money. But this concept can be a little bit confusing at first, and I've gotten a number of questions about it. So I wanted to do a video and specifically discuss why the age of money matters, what number you should be aiming for, and how you can take a few simple steps to make your money grow older. But enough of the intro, let's just jump into it. So first, let's start off with why. Why should you care about your age of money, which shows up right here in this top right-hand corner of YNAB? Well, the main reason is because it helps you break that paycheck to paycheck cycle. Once your money gets old enough, you're going to actually start using your income from one month to budget for expenses in the next month. That should be your long term goal. When you do this, then you don't really care about when bills are due because you know that by the time you get to that month, you're fully funded. You've got all of your goals have been met and you've got money sitting and available in every category. Whereas right now, for example, today is February 21st and I've got a phone bill that's due on the 23rd and Spotify that's due on the 28th. So even though I have money in my checking account, all that money is allocated down to other categories. So if I don't get paid again between now and the 23rd, I'm going to need to take money from somewhere else in my budget to be able to cover this phone and internet bill. Maybe I want to come down to my auto maintenance category, for example, and move $218 up to my phone bill so that I'm ready and prepared for when that phone bill comes through. Well, the beauty of aging your money is that you don't have to do that. You don't have to worry about that once you reach a certain age. Now, before I tell you how many days you should be aiming for, let me first tell you how the age of money is calculated. The way YNAB calculates this is using an accounting term known as first in, first out. So if you were to imagine your checking account as one stack, one massive stack of money in dollar bills, as you get paid, your paycheck's going to come on the bottom of the stack. So if you make $1,000, it goes right to the bottom of the stack. And then as you start spending dollars, that paycheck is going to slowly, slowly rise to the top. And eventually, maybe it's a couple days later or a couple weeks later or a couple months later, you're going to get to that paycheck that you got that started out on the bottom. It has now risen up through the top of the stack and you're going to start spending that money. What YNAB is doing is using your previous 10 transactions to calculate the average time that a single dollar spends inside that stack. So if you get paid on a Friday and then you're already dipping into that specific paycheck by Monday, well, your age of money is only three days old. Whereas if you can get paid on a Friday and you don't actually touch those specific dollars for a month, well, now your age of money is 30 days old. And that's what the recommendation is, both from me and from YNAB, is to try and get your money to be 30 days old. That means that you have officially broken the paycheck to paycheck cycle and you are using this month's income for next month's bills rather than the other way around. Now, I will throw out two caveats here. Number one is if you are just starting out on YNAB and you're fairly new to the program, don't get too caught up in this age of money, at least for the first few weeks and really even couple of months. It's going to take time for you to really start aging your money and breaking that paycheck to paycheck cycle. It also is going to take some time for YNAB to even calculate your age of money and give you a number at all. Second, if you are using credit cards, there's something known as the credit card flow. And it has to do with the way credit card statement balances versus grace periods work. Now, I'm not going to cover that in this video. I do have another video talking all about the way that statements work for credit cards. Feel free to watch that one if you need help with that. But just know that if you are using a credit card and then waiting until the payment is due to make your payment, even if you're paying in full, you actually need to age your money a little bit more than 30 days to truly break the paycheck to paycheck cycle. I would aim for somewhere in the realm of 45 to 60, depending on how long your grace period is. Now, as important as the age of money is, which I know I just spent a lot of time saying that the age of money is important, I actually don't want you to get too terribly tied up in the number itself. What I would much rather you focus on is this idea of using this month's paychecks to pay for next month's expenses so that by the time you get to next month, you are fully funded. You'll know that you've hit this when you can go into the next month and you show up on March 1st and all of your categories don't have your yellow, you haven't met this goal yet, but instead are green and have little check marks beside them because you have fully funded all of your goals and your underfunded button is at zero. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about here or have questions about how YNAB handles goals, 
be sure to check out the video that I did on that. In YNAB, the way this works, I'll go back to February, is that when you get paid, so let's say that I get paid today, and let's say that I get a paycheck of $2,000. This comes in, and now my to be budgeted is up by 2000 And I'm going to go ahead and fund the last little bill that I have, Spotify here. And then now I'm fully funded for February, and I just got paid. So I can actually take February's paychecks and go into March. And maybe I just want to click my debt repayment, my fixed bills, and some of my living expenses. Then hit underfunded. And now I've already funded about half of the month of February. Maybe I'll take this and throw the rest of it at my Discover It bill so I can keep paying my debt down. And I've budgeted all my money and I'm done. So then when I get paid at the 1st of March, I would then be able to use that first paycheck to budget for the rest of March's expenses. And slowly, slowly over time, I'm going to start inching my way to a full 30 days ahead and using all of this month's income to pay for next month's bills. Now, before we talk about some tips on exactly how to do that, the last thing I'll say on this whole what number you should be aiming for thing is that if you are ultra conservative or you maybe run your own business and you have a really volatile income level, you might wanna aim for something more than 30 days. For me specifically, I am on the conservative side of this and I also run my own business. So in my business budget, I actually aim for an age of money that is greater than 90 days old. That means that at any point, I can use the income that my business generates right now to pay for bills that are three months out. This gives me a nice big buffer because my business can have massive swings and I can have one month that's really, really, really great and then the very next month be down drastically. So this allows me to still pay myself a regular salary and have a nice stable budget over time. If you do have stability in your work and get a regular paycheck, I would aim for that 30 to 60 day age of money like we talked about a minute ago. Okay, so this all sounds really good, but for many of you watching, this probably sounds like pie in the sky, like dreamland, fantasy land. How is this even possible? Well, there's pretty much only one way to age your money, and that is you have to spend less money than you earn and take the unused money from one month and use it for the next month. When you do this consistently for one, two, three, five, 10, 15 months, you will eventually break the paycheck to paycheck cycle. For me and Hannah, it took us about seven months of consistently using YNAB, spending less than we earned and taking that excess and putting it towards next month to help us get ahead. Just like what I showed you a few minutes ago, when you get paid and you don't need that money to fund the rest of what you need for this month, you can go into the next month and start budgeting for next month's bills. It's important to recognize this sort of simple fact that there's only two ways to get ahead in all of personal finance, okay? You can either increase your income or you can decrease your spending. Those are your two options. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people, our income and spending looks like this, right? It's the same size. For some of us, our income and spending looks like this, right? This is not a good place to be. In an ideal world, we can do a little bit of both. Decrease our spending a little bit, increase our income a little bit, and make this gap much bigger than it currently is. Now, when it comes to decreasing your spending, I want you to definitely check out that goals video because the main point of this, and, and I've done a lot of videos on how to decrease your spending, how to make sure your spending aligns with your values and your priorities. But the big idea is that I want you going through your budget with a fine tooth comb, looking at the goals of every single category and comparing the goal to what really lines up with your priorities. Is this, you know, pet insurance at $56 a month truly worth it to us? Well, for us, it is. Is the Netflix payment truly worth it to us? Is the amount we're spending on groceries truly worth it? Or would I rather take that money and use it for something else? I want you to go back through your budget and question all of these categories and try to get this total underfunded number down below your income level as much as you can. And of course, lastly, on the lowering your spending, I want you to, at the end of each month, see if you have any money available in your categories, anything that's unused or left over. And if you do, especially when you're really trying to sort of be in the phase of aging your money quickly, I want you to take any leftovers you have, put it into to be budgeted, go into the next month, and then use it for next month's bills. And when it comes to increasing your income, the three things that have worked really well for me in the past is number one, looking around at my house and seeing what I have sitting around that I could sell on eBay. I've sold over $1,000 worth of stuff on eBay over the past few years of things that I once used and no longer need. 
The second thing I would do is if you work a job where you can easily take on more hours or ask for overtime or something like that, it might be worth doing that even if it's just for a short time period so that you can age your money quickly. And number three, of course, is looking if there's anything else you can start on the side. I've got a whole video that talks about how I started doing freelance work on the side of my day job and how eventually I turned that into full-time work, but you don't have to do that. You could continue doing it on the side just for a little while to get to where you've aged your money, broken that paycheck to paycheck cycle. And then the nice thing is that once you've done that and you've aged your money to over 30, you can actually pull your foot off that gas pedal just a little bit if you want to. You can relax a little bit, go back to working on the rest of your goals and spending um, a little more and enjoying the money that you have. You don't have to be quite as frugal once you've broken that cycle. After all, that's the whole point of aging your money so that you don't have to be crazy frugal, crazy intense with your income or worried and stressed out about your money. That's what YNAB is here for. That's what this is here for. It's to finally give us peace of mind when it comes to our money. If this video was helpful for you, be sure to check out my other YNAB tutorials here on YouTube, as well as my YNAB checklists at mappedoutmoney.com forward slash YNAB dash checklist. As always, remember, I can teach you how to budget, but I can't make you do it. The choice is yours. I'll see y'all next time.